Hey guys, how's it going? Chess back again with another episode of the AC Milan career mode. We're into double figures. It's episode number 10. We've got some good news. Erby Emanuelson and Ignazio Abate have signed contract extension contract extensions and they won't be leaving us in the summer but we get some bad news as well Christian Zapata has broken his tailbone out on international duty with Colombia he's gonna be out for four months four months wowzers so uh, Adil Rami and Victor Luiz Victor Ruiz rather start the uh, the opening game of the episode at home against Genoa hoping to come away with three points if we possibly can been in some great form recently picking up a lot of goals not conceding many either so if we could keep a clean sheet in this one as well I'd be very very pleased indeed but you can see from the table that's going to pop up on your screen we're up to fourth now uh, Inter Milan didn't win their game in or haven't played their game in hand. Roma did win their game in hand, so they sit top of the table. But uh, we're hoping to uh, to pick up some points in this one if we possibly can. Kazuki Honda is going to have the opening chance, drawing a good save out the goalkeeper. Nice twist and turn on the edge of the box, trying to get it onto that left foot of his, of course, because uh, that is without shadow of doubt one of the most potent left foots in all of football, to be completely honest. But uh, Genoa were actually going to find themselves going 1 0 up here through fortuitous circumstances. It breaks towards the edge of the box to the Pardon me, towards the far side of the box at uh, the back post. And there's just a man free to slam it into the back of the net. And we're heading towards half-time. And they're going to have a chance to extend the lead. Guido with a great save. And of all the players to miss that shot, it's Alberto Giardino. He was supposed to be one of the up-and-coming strikers about five or six years ago. And unfortunately, he misses an open goal. But we made a change at half-time. Balotelli wasn't having the best of games. Was a little bit tired. So I brought on Alexander Lacazette crunching tackle from Sully Montaro. They Lecazette played in in the early stages of the second half. Unfortunately, the volley goes wide. But you see this tackle again. That is definitely a Sully Montari challenge. Full-blooded, absolute cruncher. But unfortunately for them, their man got injured and he had to come off the pitch. But we're on the counter-attack here. Honda played in by Polly. Tries to square it across. Great save from Perrin into Lacazette at the far post. Keeping the chance alive. In comes the cross. Up goes Honda and he can't quite keep himself on side and I've been really disappointed with Honda recently he's not been the sort of player that I was hoping he would be at AC Milan we had him in the Sunderland career mode in uh, on FIFA 13 by the way what a goal to get us back on level terms by Alexander Lacazette let's just completely forget about Kozuki Honda and focus on the man of the moment that is Lacazette he's been so good for us since coming in really filled the void for a rotation striker absolutely superbly scores goals left right and centre for us great uh, kind of heel clicker there to get away from the defender and that is a strike and a half Mario Balotelli that is why you were on the bench for this one. Stefano Sorari, though, breaking away, trying to win us the game. He's going to cut inside both defenders here. Goals at his mercy, and he puts it wide. I still, to this day, do not know how he has missed that chance. He scored an easy goal similar to that in yesterday's episode, and he's put that one well wide. Had three feet of open goal to aim at there, and unfortunately wasn't able to get the winner. But Lacazette plays the ball short. It's two in from the corner, whips it in. Atul Rami with an overhead kick in the 95th minute. What a winner and what an unexpected source of that winner as well. We'll see all three of those replays. The referee added on one minute for added time. It's so EA AIDS, it's unbelievable. It was 90 plus one. Such amazing technique from a centre-back to be able to pull that off. In, up, in off the post and that goal went in in the 95th minute absolutely stolen all three points here against Genoa. you got a feel for them, but if there was ever a goal that was going to win you a game, and deservedly so, that is the sort of goal you need. From the most unexpected source ever, Adil Rami with quite easily the best winner I've had on career mode ever, to be completely honest. But as you can see, it's a thoroughly deserved when we had so many chances, a lot of possession, and uh, fortunately we were able to come out with the three points. But we're playing a rotation side in the Champions League now. As we covered in yesterday's video, not only have we already qualified after four games, we've already won the group after four games as well. So we're coming up against Chelsea, although we played a rotation side against Chelsea in the first game against them in the group stage, away at Stamford Bridge, and we're still able to come out with a victory. So fingers crossed we could do the same here. We've got Pelosi up top 
with uh, Romario out wide, and I was hoping to have a decent game, but Chelsea have clearly learnt from their mistakes in uh, in the opening game against us. Eto coming very close in, nice turn and shot, and unfortunately for him, it went wide of that uh, of that near post. But uh, they clearly learnt their lesson because they were so much stronger this time around. But Czech makes a mistake there, plays the ball out to Adel to Raps, has a decent shot. Czech makes the save, up goes Pelosi, can't quite bring it down properly, and Adel to Raps is snatching at the ball, can't quite get a decent chance away, and unfortunately. Unfortunately, the ball is eventually cleared. But Chelsea are in behind here. Lice ball over the top. Unfortunately, as P can't get near it. Now you see what I'm going to do with uh, with Abiati. I'm just going to try and play out to the guy in front of me. There's nobody there. And I don't know why he's just squared it or played it straight out to Sammy Leto there. That is absolutely horrible goalkeeper. I even moved the stick left to purposefully play it to the guy directly in front of me. And Abiati's given it straight to Sammy Leto. So we find ourselves... 1-0 down, and rather frustratingly 1-0 down as well. Matic just doesn't stop, hits the inside of the post. Unfortunately, we are going to be able to get that ball clear after Matic just ran at me and ran at me and ran at me, powering his way, powering his way through my defensive line. But Erby Emanuelson is trying to play in Pelosi here. Gets a good turn in and a great strike. Unfortunately, the power on it isn't enough to beat Petacek, though. Makes a great save, and we stay at 1-0 down. But Rubinho into the 90th minute. Can we get a late goal again? Looking for Taraps, it falls to Pelosi, tries to turn it back towards that far post, but it's not accurate enough. And even if it was on target, I really think Petacek would have had that covered with the pace that was on the ball. And that goal, that dodgy goal, is going to be the difference between the two sides here. Chelsea, you have to say, probably deserved the win. They had more of the ball, more chances. Although a lot of ours were on target, five of six. So perhaps a draw would have been a fairer result. But nonetheless, we take a defeat and uh, Chelsea look like they're going to progress through in the Champions League, which is disappointing because it would have been nice to have had one of the uh, the weaker sides come out of that group. But uh, nonetheless, it's looking like ourselves and Chelsea to come out of that group. But Catania away is the third and final game of the episode. And they we're hoping to pick up all three points in the league yet again. We've back to... I'm trying to think how many games we've won in the league in a, in the row at the, in a row at the minute. The last defeat was against Udinese. So we may have won three or four games in a row now. We've only lost two against Udinese and Juventus. So hopefully, I'm not sure what Honda was doing there. I'd completely forgotten I'd put that in. I've, I, I just, I can't explain it. He's just done the splits to try and take the ball onto his chest. Uh, that's a bit of a glitch in the uh, in the engine, but nonetheless, let's move on. Let's try and get a goal if we possibly can. Polly looking for Lacazette, can't quite find him, and uh, Kazuki Honda is going to nick the ball off the defender here. Step inside, looking for the uh, looking for the far top corner, can't find it, back off the bar. But Alexander Lacazette is on hand to get another poacher's goal. He's doing so well for us. I cannot cannot uh, express to you how impressed with him I have been. A friend of mine, Tom, or Funky Town 49 you may have known his old YouTube channel, he, um, he re recommended him to me, but also said I had to be careful because, you know, he hadn't gotten on with him too well, but he was still a decent player. And uh, I made the made the jump with him, you know, made the leap of faith, and I'm so, so glad I did because he's been superb for us. But what isn't superb for us is the fact that three players, two defenders and a goalkeeper, can't stop Bagisio from getting them back on level terms just as we're heading in for half time. And not only did we uh, did we give away a goal at one end just before half time, just after half time, Victor Guit is going to give away a penalty. You see from the replay, I think he wins the ball. Watch his right knee. Goes down. He needs that away. That is not a penalty in my opinion. He's done very, very well to win the ball there. Barrientos steps up with a penalty, takes a started run up and Guita makes the save. Some might say it's justice. Some might say it's just pure luck. I don't care. We're still at 1-1 and have the chance to win the game. Kazuki Honda putting the pressure on at the back. I've never, ever, ever seen a goalkeeper make a mistake like that in all my time of FIFA career mode. We've had the best winner ever and the biggest two of the biggest goalkeeping howlers ever. One for us and one for Catania here. And Kazuki Honda, who I slagged off earlier on in the episode, uh, <laughs> grabs a goal. Well done, Kazuki. And he's played in again here. Shows great strength to hold off the defender. Great first touch, great second touch. And I rip into him and he it's like he heard me. He just went ham in this game, picking up his second goal of the game to give us a 3-1 lead. And he's going to get played through again here by Mario Balotelli. The chance to get himself a hat-trick. Brings it down beautifully, but it's a great save from the goalkeeper and the jar, making up for the mistake he made earlier on to keep us out. But we pick up a corner nonetheless. The threat isn't over yet, and we are going to whip that corner in. Lulic is going to play into the box. Sylvester, the, uh, the on-loan stri uh, on striker, on-loan centre-back, 
Only rated 74. Doesn't play that much for us, but that is a phenomenal header from the penalty spot. Not really very often at all you score a header from that far out from a corner, but great accuracy on it. Up and away into that top corner, and we take a convincing 4-1 win out of this one. Kazuki Honda picking up two, Lacazette picking up a goal as well, and that header from Sylvester. So very, very pleased indeed to pick up those points because it means we now sit top of Serie A. Of course, as you can see, Roma and Inter still have a game in hand. Napoli have two games in hand, and if they all win those games in hand, we will drop down to fourth. But uh, nonetheless, let's enjoy the moment while it's, whilst it lasts. We are top of Serie A. So that's all for today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Please do feel free to leave the video a like if you could be so kind. That would be absolutely superb. There was an episode of this yesterday, as always, and also an episode of My Player last night as well. So if you missed either of those, then feel free to check the channel page. And uh, there is a link on screen, in fact, to the last episode of this series on the right-hand side. You want to make sure that you don't miss out on any of the videos on this channel, then make sure you hit that subscribe button. Closing up on 7,000 subs as I make this video, so hopefully we can hit that over the weekend. That'd be absolutely fantastic if we can. And of course, feel free to follow me on Twitter as well, at Chesnoy Gaming, to make sure you stay up to date with everything that goes on with me and this channel as well. But that's all for today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. We'll have my player again tomorrow afternoon, and I will see you then.